Good evening. Once again, it is good to see each and every one of you, and what a blessing it is, isn't it, that we get together together again tonight, that we get to uh, prepare one more time and worship together for that wonderful place that is over there, that place of heaven where we can one day be for eternity uh, with each other in the presence of God. As we finished up last week, there on Sunday nights in a series of lessons on the prison epistles, we are going to begin by going to the Old Testament uh, this time. We're going to start a new series of lessons looking at gleanings from Joshua and Judges. And so over the next several Sunday evenings, that's what we're going to be looking at, not a verse by verse, but taking different sections and different powerful passages within Joshua Judges and examining those in light of God's Word and, and growing our faith in such. When we think about the reality of that, and we think about Joshua and the context leading up to it, the Israelites, as we talked about this morning in the Exodus, they had been wandering for 40 years. That first generation, unfortunately, there in Numbers 13, having not relied on God, that generation needed to be passed away. And so for 40 years, the Israelites wandered basically in a circle through the wilderness. And when that time had come, therein lied the moment wherein the promised land lied before them. But there are some things that have taken place. As I said, the previous generation was now God. Their leader, their great leader Moses, who had helped bring them out of Egypt, has now passed away. And they stand at the foot of the promised land, that which they had been longing to see, that which they had been wanting to see, and a new leader was placed before them. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, that will be our text this evening. If you want to go ahead and turn there, go ahead. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, this sets the tone for the entire book, doesn't it? This is what sets forth how Joshua is going to lead the people. The text therein contains the, reputa or the repetition of a formula of faith and encouragement that would play an extremely important role in Joshua's service as this new leader of the nation of Israel. In fact, three different times in this first chapter, God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. That is the title of our lesson tonight, be strong and courageous. This powerful statement, is that which is going or should motivate us as we look at how God encourages and strengthens, empowers, if you will, Joshua to lead in righteousness and truth. If you have your Bibles now, let's go ahead and read Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites of the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give to them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, 
but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. As we look at that passage there, as we look at our text in which we're going to be breaking down and examining the lessons therein, what amazing encouragement from our God. Be strong and courageous. He tells this new leader, Joshua. And so if you have your hand out, let's go ahead and look at our first point. Our first point is just that, be strong. When we look at our text, we see one of the first things about being strong that God wants uh, Joshua to recognize and understand. There's one powerful word therein in verse 2 that I want us to look at. And that powerful action word is the word arise. Again there in verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Stand up, in other words. God is telling Joshua, it is now your turn to stand up and step up to the plate. It was his turn to now lead the people. The proper amount of time had taken place for the mourning of Moses, the great leader. But now was the time for Joshua to arise, to stand up and to become strong. It was Joshua's turn to step up take charge, and lead the people where they needed to go. Every congregation is going to have ups and downs, aren't they? They're going to have the times of fat and the times of lean, the times where things are great and the times when things are struggling. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says, Listen, there is a time for everything, and that's the case with the Lord's church as well. The church is in far too many places, unfortunately, though, getting stuck looking to the past. Think of the Israelites here as before or right before Joshua in the book of Joshua takes place. Moses has died. Their leader is gone. Yes, he gave them the great sermon of Deuteronomy and tried to prepare them before that, before his passing, but he's not there. They're about to go to war. They're about to fight those that are giants, remember, in the land. They've been mourning. They've been weeping. But now is the time to arise. Now is the time to, as God would say, look to the future and not the past. As I said, far too many congregations get stuck in the past instead of looking to the future. I heard someone say one time, one of the most destructive attitudes a congregation can have is we've never done it that way. I'm not saying that we need to step outside the paths of righteousness. No, we need to stay within those paths. But just because uh, there's new blood or there's new leadership or there's new whatever the case may be, congregations can sometimes get bogged down in the things and ways in which we used to do things. And it can hinder the growth of the church. When people say, we've never done it that way before, many times what they're really meaning is, I don't feel comfortable with that, and I'm not going to do it. Imagine if Joshua had said, listen, God, I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not comfortable with moving forward. I'm not comfortable with arising and going across the Jordan as you asked. In the same capacity, you are now asking me to be... That was Moses' job, not mine, to lead the people. Imagine if Joshua had said, listen, I, I've never done this before. I have no way of getting this done. Brothers and sisters, that can't be the attitude of the church ever, can it? We must always look forward to what can be done to further the work of God. I remember what Brother Carol Moses said this morning, the question yeah, his eyes got real big all of a sudden. <laughs> the question he asks us in Bible class is a prudent question, isn't it? Are we doing enough? 
As we reflect on ourselves, we reflect on the church, and we think about our walk with God, are we doing enough? Are we, in other words, moving forward in the direction we ought to always be walking forward in? Or are we stuck in our past accomplishments and the past things? That question goes to where the heart of this idea of being strong, it takes strength to go forward. It takes strength to look at oneself and ask that question, am I doing enough? Am I being strong enough to arise as God would have us arise. Isn't this idea, this plea, this hope, this want of us to be strong and courageous, to move forward in righteousness and truth, isn't this what Paul is talking to Titus about? Remember, Titus was a preacher, a young preacher, who hadn't quite finished the things that Paul had left him there to do. He hadn't quite accomplished all that Paul had expected or wanted him to accomplish. And when we look at Titus chapter 2, 7 through 8, Paul is encouraging Titus to arise and step up, isn't he? Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an, appoint, uh, at, an uh, uh, opponent may not and may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Brothers and sisters, if we're going to get where we want to be spiritually, if we're going to get to the point of stepping up and arising as God would have us arise, as he told Joshua to arise, we must be of good courage. And we must understand that it's about moving forward, not always looking backwards. This can only be accomplished, though, if we are willing to follow God, if we are going to go where we want to be spiritually, as a congregation, we need to arise. We need to step up in faith and place our hope in God. And when this happens, when we're able to do that, when this is our motivation, when this is our strength as Joshua is being encouraged and strengthened by God to do, when that is us, when we understand that, we can accomplish this if we are willing to follow God, which is why God pushed Joshua to be obedient. Listen, how do you arise and have the courage and the strength and the intestinal fortitude needed to move forward, to ask those hard questions of yourself and of your brothers and sisters? How do you have that strength? To do that by obeying God. God expects his followers to obey his will, doesn't he? Joshua wasn't just told to arise, but he was told to arise and to go. To go across the Jordan and to lead the people in that direction. As God's children today, we must do more than just simply standing up. We must do more than just simply arising. We must be willing to go and do. It has been said that God gave the Israelites approximately 300,000 square miles. Of that 300,000 square miles, they only cultivated and took true ownership of 30,000 square miles. Think about that for a second. What we just read, what God said to Joshua, listen, all this is yours. 300,000 square miles or so. They really only took possession of and developed 30,000 square miles. Oftentimes we don't live up to the spiritual potential that is there before us because we aren't fully invested in obedience to God. The Israelites, it's not that they couldn't overcome. It's not that they couldn't take possession. It's not that they couldn't spread out and take part of all that land. It's that they chose not to. They became lazy in many ways. They also didn't do what God would have them to do. They didn't destroy all the inhabitants of the land, and they were always a thorn in their side. They were always that which showed them an unhappy reality. They haven't lived up to God's obedience. We get to be happy, sometimes in a happy medium, excuse me, as Christians, don't we? As Christians, we can sometimes, in our walk with God, get to a point where things are really pretty good. 
We hit that quote unquote happy medium and instead of continuing to grow, we stall out. Instead of Israel continuing to take, develop and grow that all that land, the promised land that was given to them, they got happy. They got satisfied with where they were. Even though God had told Joshua that shouldn't be the case. I read a statement one time that I think is appropriate here. The writer said this, Blessed is the man who finds out which way God is moving and, it's, and then gets going in that direction. Instead of being stalled out, instead of being at a happy medium, no, the one who is blessed is the one who obeys God, who finds wherever God is going, whichever direction he is, and that is the direction that is gone. That quote reminds me of the psalmist in Psalm Verse one, or Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2. Blessed again or happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the ways of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Brothers and sisters, if we are going to get to where we want to be spiritually, as a congregation, we need to arise. We need to step up in faith, place our hope in God, and always focus on doing His will, being obedient to Him. And not just hearers, James 1.22. Not just hearers of the word, but doers. We must, as Joshua later on, in Joshua 23 and verse 6, would say, be very strong to keep and to do all that is written, turning aside from it neither to the right hand nor to the left. Stepping up and obeying our God can only be accomplished by those like Joshua, like those who understand what it means to not only stand up and be obedient, but it also means to rely on God. How is Joshua? Or how are we today able to fight that good fight of faith? How are we able to be strong? How are we able to test ourselves and make sure we're in the faith, asking ourselves the question, am I doing enough? Am I where I ought to be in my walk with God? How are we able to do that? We understand who God is and our reliance on Him. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, God is wholeheartedly trying to get Joshua to understand he is on his side. God is saying, look to me, rely on me. Let's read again verses 5 through 7. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause the, this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Is there a more grand promise to Joshua than this? I will be with you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Today, we have as God's children that same promise that we have a God who can be relied upon. Jesus in Matthew 28 and verse 20 would say it this way, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It again, in Hebrews 13 and verse 5, the Hebrew writer would say it this way, keep your life free from the love of money or the things of this world. In other words, be content with what you have. Why is this the case? For he has said, I will never leave you, or I will never leave you, nor forsake you. The same promise Joshua had, you and I have. We can rely on God. He is going to be right there with us. In the church, we don't always act like we believe what God is saying. That God will always be there for us. That he will always never leave us. That he will always never forsake us. 
Yes, God, every single time, he gives us a job and enables us and empowers us to carry it out. He is there with us, isn't he? Whether it's teaching the lost, visiting the less fortunate, taking care of our neighbors or serving in worship or any other spiritual job, God is there for us. He's empowering us. He's strengthening us. He's encouraging us. And we can rely on him. He gives us the tools available to accomplish anything and everything. Brothers and sisters, if we are going to get to where we want to spiritually be, as individuals in a congregation, we need to always understand the need to arise, to step up in faith, place our hope in God, Focus on doing the will of God, being doers and not just hearers of the word and relying on him who has promised us his faithfulness. All we need to be strong for our God is to step up, is to be obedient and to rely on the faithful creator. But God didn't tell Joshua just to be strong, did he? He didn't just say, listen, you need to have that intestinal fortitude or strength necessary to handle the, the weight of leadership and the things that are being asked of him to do the job God wanted him to do. No, he said, not only be strong, but also be courageous. There is a need for courage in every child of God. There is a need of courage for us to be strong and do the right things. I can really picture Joshua, can you? Looking out across this nation of Israel, potentially in the several millions, and seeing all these that Moses had faithfully and righteously led, and the vast land before him filled with the enemies of God, that he is being asked to lead his people into a defeat. Listen, there's no doubt by God's communication with Joshua that he felt a little weak, that he felt a little inadequate and even probably frightened. I don't know about you, but I probably would have as well. But God, in verse 9 of our text, again encourages Joshua to be courageous, doesn't he? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What would have happened had God not offered up his support and let Joshua just simply work things out on his own? To work out those feelings of inadequacies, those fears and those weaknesses, what would have happened? Brothers and sisters, we might not know everything that God does, providentially speaking, this side of heaven. And we might not know everything even there when we get there. But what we do know is God is active in our lives today. We don't know every aspect. We don't know how he encourages and strengthens us in every form or fashion, but we do know he is there for us. Just like Joshua, he is there with us wherever we go. God's interaction with Joshua is a great example of how we as Christians should set aside our fears and feelings of inadequacy and rely on God and his precious promises. I'm reminded of Philippians 4 and verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Like Joshua, we have been tasked with a duty, Luke 17 and verse 10. A job, an expectation. And as we consider our service to God, we need to gain courage. We can't have what Brother Stapleton one time, one time called grasshopper, a grasshopper complex. In Numbers chapter 13, 33, remember the spies. All the two, Joshua and Caleb, they came back in Numbers 13, 33 and said, listen, they are like giants and we are simply like 
grasshoppers. We can't have that kind of complex with God. Instead of the grasshopper complex that says we can't do anything, we are feeble and we are without, no, we need to have that of Joshua and Caleb, the I can overcome anything with God on my side complex. In Numbers 13, 30, we remember Caleb stated, let us go up once and occupy it, for we are able to overcome it. Translation is this, we're not weak need grasshoppers, we have God there before us. There's no need to be fearful and afraid. God is with us, be of courage. Unfortunately, the people did not listen to Caleb and Joshua. God has a job for all of us, and he isn't looking for scared individuals, but courageous ones that will fight the good fight of faith that will destroy the arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ and those that will do so unto death. In other words, God is looking for those that are courageous enough, as we look at our last thought here, to stand for what is right. Joshua was expected not just to be strong, but courageous. To have enough courage to stand up for what was right, no matter what. Joshua was that man, was the one that was courageous enough to stand up to anyone and everyone because he was willing to listen to God. Joshua 1 and verse 8 again, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, God told him. But you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Unfortunately, many people are not like Joshua. They walk around in a stupor because they are in spiritual darkness. Psalm 119 and 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It's not rocket scientists to say that a lamp is necessary to see in the dark. This is why it's so important to make sure we are rightly handling the belt of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15 and Ephesians 6.14. Far too many, even in the brotherhood, have loved, as Jesus would say in John 12.43, the glory that comes from man more than the glory from God. They have cast the law behind their backs, Nehemiah 9:26, and turned their backs to the house of God, Ezekiel 8 and verse 16. But as God's children, we can't do that. As God's children, we can't be weak, weak need and have a grasshopper complex. We must be courageous. We must keep the God's word lighting our path and stand up against and for all things that are right and true, turning never our back on God. Brothers and sisters, it is up to us, isn't it? Like Joshua, whether we will be strong and courageous in the faith or not. God, like Joshua, or God has given and will continue to give us like Joshua, everything we need to do that which he has commissioned us to do. In Ephesians 2 and verse 10 it says, we were all created in Christ Jesus for good works. Let us not be afraid. Let us be courageous in our trust of our God. Let us accept his will and be strong in his might through the power of his word and the guidance of his word. The future is ours if we, like Joshua, will, will take full advantage of it. As children of God today, let us be strong <clears throat> and courageous. As you reflect upon that tonight, as you think about your walk with God, I pray, as I know most of you are, are very strong and courageous. But there are those times in which we are in our walk where those fiery darts of Satan 
where the ravenous, uh, the ravenous lion is lying in wait and we find ourselves sometimes getting pushed back with that armor of God being overwhelmed. Understand this. First, God's with you, and second, we're with you. Let us help you stay strong and courageous. Let us help you stand up against sin and make it flee from you. Let us, like Joshua led the Israelites and helped uh, lead them to the promised land, let us help each other get to our promised land, eternity in heaven. This evening, if there is someone here who needs the prayers of this congregation to be strong and courageous, to fight that good fight of faith, to lay hold of that crown that awaits for you, if there is someone here who needs that tonight, let us know by coming forward as we stand and as we sing.